podcast where we put you on the map. This is Ron Costa broadcasting live in the Mappable USA studios here in Las Vegas. And today we're going to continue our conversations about Opportunity Zones. And for that, we bring in Vicky Hachmala from the QOZ Marketplace and the Opportunity Zones Authority. Vicky, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Ron. It's another outstanding day in Vegas. No, it really is. And the last podcast that we did on Opportunity Zones and the the authority, we introduced the authority to people out there. We got a lot of uh, really good feedback on that already. So I figured we continue this whole push with Opportunity Zones. And everyone understands that Opportunity Zones are located in, in every state of the, of the union, all 50 states. And uh, Vegas is no different. We did a show on, uh, on, on Opportunity Zones a while back. And now we're going to bring on another guest on the show, who is really specializing in the Henderson area. And so, so Vicki, let's welcome Anthony Malloy, the redevelopment mem- mem- uh, redevelopment uh, uh, specialist over at <laughs> Henderson, Nevada. That was a really bad intro. I'm sorry, Anthony. <laughs> That's all right, Ron. <laughs> redevelopment manager at Henderson, Nevada. There you go. That's, that's better. That's better. But uh, thank you for taking the time and being on the show, Anthony. I know that you are completely swamped. Uh, I really appreciate you giving us some time today. Of course. I'm happy to be here, Ron and Vicki. Yep. And now we, we mentioned before how opportunity zones are in every state. We talked about where they are all over the place. Vegas has a number of them. But you know what people don't understand, uh, Anthony, is I don't think people realize how great Henderson is in terms of really cities to live in the entire United States. Whenever you look at some of these you know, best places to live type of things on the, online, Henderson always ranks up there. There's so much going on right now. And, uh, you know, you, you would know you're, you're involved just about everything out there right now. I am. And Henderson is um, a growing community. We have people moving here every month. Our population is increasing, and we are still Nevada's second largest city. Exactly, exactly. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on, on yourself and, and how you got to be where you are and, and what, you, what, you're, what you're, uh, you're doing and your main focuses are these days? Well, um, my background is in urban planning, and I came to work for Henderson about 12 or so years ago in the redevelopment agency. Um, before that, I worked for Clark County in their comprehensive planning department, and I have been in... Um, uh, community planning efforts for about 25 years in all. Oh, my. That makes you an expert, Anthony. You know it what you're talking does. about. It probably does make me an expert, but every day is a learning opportunity. So <laughs> what kind of projects do you have going on uh, in Henderson? And, and kind of explain to us what makes Henderson aside – more unique and the projects that you're doing compared to, say, uh, Vegas proper or North Las Vegas or even Northern Nevada? Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to redevelopment areas, I'm not sure that we are unique because we uh, we have a shared vision, a shared purpose, and that is to help remove um, barriers that are preventing investment happening in distressed neighborhoods. And those barriers can be physical, economic, or social blight. And so redevelopment agencies across the nation, they share the same purpose the sh- and, the, and the same vision and the same struggles as well because developers traditionally want to be in um, more affluent neighborhoods. They want to be in areas with higher um, salaries. They want to have um, open businesses in those neighborhoods as well. Whereas redevelopment agencies, we are focusing on creating jobs and opening businesses in the perhaps the least desirable neighborhoods where there are um, uh, social problems or maybe social problems where there is physical blight or where the, um, the amount of money that people earn in the, those neighborhoods is less than in other parts of the city. And and that's what makes Opportunity Zones such a unique uh, opportunity because it helps to lift up those blighted areas as well as giving the tax opportunities to the investors so that they're looking in places like this where they wouldn't otherwise be doing. Well, 
That's right. What it does is it provides a tool that allows people who want to build new projects or open new businesses or um, provide services, um, it allows them to have access to funding that previously did not exist or that was uh, more difficult for them to obtain. So one of the biggest challenges that we face um, as a redevelopment agency is having our clients be able to access capital. So when they go into a bank to get um, approval of financing, whether it's to build a new house or whether it's to build a business or a commercial building, the banks are also cautious and they think, well, this is in a neighborhood that um, the residents don't have as much money as the other areas of the city, so will the business be successful? So that's been a, a challenge for our clients to access that capital, but the Opportunity Zone funding is specifically only available in these distressed neighborhoods, and so that's what makes the program so great. Right. Do, does uh, Henderson offer any kind of expedited services to help these investors in the Opportunity Zones uh, go through the process more quickly? Absolutely. So what, it's not more quickly, but we definitely streamline the process. So we consider that to be a concierge service. So if a developer comes to the city, comes to the redevelopment agency, and they are interested in developing in any redevelopment area, whether it's within an opportunity zone or not, but if it's in a redevelopment area, we will walk them through the entire process from their um, initial area of discovery to see if it's actually going to work uh, for their project through zoning approvals, their entitlements, through their building permit process. So we definitely streamline the process and make it easier for them to um, maneuver. And that's an important factor. It absolutely is an important factor because time is money when you're talking about development. And, and especially with the Opportunity Zone funds, which are uh, relatively time limited. That's correct. The, time, the clock is ticking um, for Opportunity Zone fund investment. So do, do you have any uh, funds operating on projects now in uh, Henderson? So officially there is nothing that I can talk about, but I am working with a handful of developers who are accessing and utilizing Opportunity Zone funds to help with um, the financing for their projects. Oh, excellent. Now, I'm looking, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the map right here of, of the Henderson development. There's, there's about five different areas uh, that are designated as Opportunity Zones right now. So we have five redevelopment areas, but we only have four Opportunity Zones. Okay. And the okay. Opportunity Zones are primarily in our downtown redevelopment area, but also extend into our east side redevelopment area. Yeah, Do you find that people are interested in uh, uh, business development or housing development? Or what do, you, what do you think that investors are more um, inclined to invest in? So right now, the interest that we are seeing is in new construction. So it's not um, for the expansion of existing businesses, but it's new ground up construction. And specifically, because um, one of the opportunity zones is in our downtown, um, we're seeing a, a great interest um, in mixed use projects and financing for those mixed use projects. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I live in Henderson as well, uh, Anthony, and I'm seeing the changes firsthand. I mean, uh, you, you guys are doing so much work around the Water Street, uh, Water Street District, and there's a, I believe there's an ice skating rink uh, happening soon over there too? So we are in negotiations. We have an exclusive negotiating agreement with the Vegas Golden Knights for um, a new ice skating arena to be in our downtown. So that would not be replacing their location in Summerlin. Summerlin will remain, or City National Arena that's in Summerlin, that will remain their home um, arena. 
um, and that's where they'll continue to have, play their games and have practices. But we are looking at the the facility in Henderson to be a location for um, a lot of different teams to be able to practice in. We know from um, data that 30% of all people using City National live in Henderson, so there is a great demand for ice time in our community. Well, that's excellent. It is excellent. Yeah, I, I, so that news, along with the fact that we have an opportunity zone in our downtown, and for the last you know, during the recession and the economic downturn, the city, the city continued to put funds into um, infrastructure improvements in our downtown, in um, creating complete streets in our downtown with detached sidewalks and landscaping and beautiful street furnishings. So we've done a lot to prepare the downtown for the private investment to ha take place. And now with the Opportunity Zone creation and the Vegas Golden Knights Arena um, in discussion, we're seeing a significant increase in the interest to development in downtown. And that gives you uh, uh, like ancillary opportunities since you're working with the Golden Knights to be able to go to individual uh, sports personalities so that they may be able to create a fund to invest in the opportunity zones as a means of community interaction and raising the quality of life. So you kind of get a dual purpose there. So I haven't had any experience um, so far in that area. Um, I have not had any um, anybody reach out to me and we're not reaching out to anybody that um, is in the sport industry beyond the exclusive negotiating agreement we have with the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, what do you do to uh, promote uh, Henderson as, do you have a standard um, that you, uh, a standard platform for how you go about marketing to who might be out there? We do. So Henderson has created um, our own um, Opportunity Zone Fund Prospectus, and that um, was created several months ago, and that was to um, make people aware that who we are, where we are, and the Opportunity Zones that we have. Um, we also um, publicize how great Henderson is in a variety of different uh printed magazines, we do a lot of social media outreach, we have special events throughout the year that bring people from out of market into our community to let people see just how great our community is. And we also attend, um, and this isn't from redevelopment, this is citywide um, as far as other departments, but we also attend conferences and um, different um, the ICSD that is in Las Vegas every year, but also regional um, conferences to promote Henderson and to get um, people interested in relocating here. And and I understand that, um, as you said, that you were going to be participating in, and going to the Opportunity Zone Expo happening in May here in Vegas, and there you should be able to connect with so many, so many different people from all around the country. That's absolutely right, and so the reason we participate in those types of events is not only for um, to increase our own learning and understanding, but to also um, create exposure to, for our community. Excellent. Yeah, that's a great way of, of, of doing it. And, you know, we talked mostly about the um, developers here that, that, are, that are building, they're doing all these changes downtown, et cetera. Uh, what about a, a business owner, Anthony? A guy wants to, uh, you know, maybe start a business in an opportunity zone. Are there any kind of uh, business incentives that uh, you guys have in place that are really attracting these kind of people who want to start, let's say, a, uh, you know, whatever, a barbershop, a pizzeria, or whatever? Uh, you guys have something like that? So the redevelopment agency does have um, grant programs that business owners are eligible to apply for, and we do use these programs for business recruitment purposes. Um, the grants 
uh, for tenant improvements and facade improvements for existing business or buildings and the um, owner of the building is eligible to apply for that or the actual business owner can also apply for those grant funds. Um, they are a dollar for dollar match and there are maximums on those but it's intended, um, those programs are intended specifically to help with business recruitment and also retention for existing businesses to maintain our current jobs that are here. Well, it sounds like Henderson is right on top of the of the market and and the opportunity provided by Opportunity Zones. That's exceptional, Anthony. Well, our goal is um, our mission is to be America's premier community, and um, we spend a lot of time at monitoring best practices from throughout the nation to make sure that Henderson remains at the forefront of what's happening. Yeah, what was your what was your first uh, uh, introduction to these opportunity zones? How did you find out about them in, in, in general? Did we just do a search, or did someone bring it up to you? Or what? Uh, no. So actually, what happened is that the governor's office of economic development notified um, our community um, management at the city that um, the governor would be considering uh, applications for the opportunity opportunity zone nominations. And every community in the state was able to submit a request or an application for their opportunity zones to be created. So I actually prepared the application for the city of Henderson that was sent to the Governor's Office of Economic Development. They assessed our applications. Um, it included a lot of background information on what the city has done to that point to remove barriers um, from within those neighborhoods being considered. So we sent our application, the, governor, um, the governor's office responded and provided us with four um, certified opportunity zones as a response to that. Yeah, so that's, that's really ground floor. That's basically from the start all the way to where we are today. That's, that's an ex excellent movement. And another thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, like schooling, for example, too. Are there any, uh, are you, are you guys building schools, or I, I, I know there's, uh, there's access to colleges, et cetera. It's, uh, what's, what's the educational situation like in, in Henderson? Well, public education um, is under the direction of the Clark County School District. So the city of Henderson okay. has no direct influence over that. Right. But um, right. we are using, uh, from redevelopment, 18% set-aside funds from revenues in our east side redevelopment area and also our downtown redevelopment area to help um, with education uh, within our community. And That's are those point. areas located in the opportunity zones in Henderson? Some of them are. Some of them are located in the opportunity zones um, or very close to those opportunity zones. That would seem like an, an excellent opportunity, maybe not so much for uh, specific schools, but, but for community-type educational programs that um, react, interrelate with the children in the community and give them places to go, safe places to go to, to learn people skills or life skills or um, physical skills. Well, that's true. I mean, the, the school district does have um, programs to have students go into internships at a variety of different types of businesses and industries. So the Opportunity Zone funding and access to that um, has the potential of um, new businesses and being created, um, allowing for students to go and intern in those businesses. And that would be, you know, something that your uh, athletic and sports people would be interested in, like Andre, Andre Agassi has in North Las Vegas. Correct. Yep. 
Well, the, the the new businesses down on Water Street right, right now are just are just killing it. They're doing really well. It seems like, uh, you know, when I, Anthony, when we spoke over at Goldmine Tavern a while back, uh, the the line out the door for the Mexican place was incredible. And uh, I know Love Lady Brewing's been there for a while. They've been pretty successful. It's great to see all these people coming into Water Street. And and the last time I was there too, I stopped off at the uh, the coffee shop that's new over there too. And and boy, I don't know if you if if you like coffee, you like cappuccino. Man, they 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 serve a killer cappuccino at that place. <laughs> That's right. Public Works Coffee is a homegrown business, um, and it, they provide fantastic service and, pr- and fantastic items that keep yeah. people coming back. Hey, any, any place you can go to during the day for coffee and then later on in the day for a beer is pretty good, don't you think? <laughs> it is. And really, it's about, um, it's about thinking outside of the box and not being a traditional coffee shop necessarily, but making it so that you're accessible to different audiences at different times of the day. And yeah. that's what Opportunity Zones are all about, thinking outside of the box, doing something different, and then at the end having that uh, touch-your-heart, feel-good opportunity that you actually gave something back. Yeah, I would hope exactly. so. That's right. So. The Opportunity Zone allows people to have access to funding that didn't exist before. And what that means is that we will see projects being developed in these distressed neighborhoods that previously may not have been um, possible. Yeah, yeah. And along those lines, too, before we let you go, Anthony, uh, again, the last time we spoke, you'd mentioned that you had some kind of development sites that you guys were working on in that, in the, in that area there. There's like three or four biggies. I don't know if you can talk about that at all, but has there been any movement as far as the uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, groundbreaking or anything like that in terms of what's going on over there? So in the downtown redevelopment area, our downtown core around City Hall, we do own the redevelopment agency, in City of Henderson, we own seven opportunity sites, um, and as of right now, we are in negotiations to sell um, six of those seven opportunity sites to developers who want to build here, and um, and they are all considering opportunity zone funds uh, either as a possibility or one of those developments uh, specifically is using Opportunity Zone Fund Capital as part of their uh, financing for the project. Wow, excellent. Yeah, that's outstanding. Yeah, that's really good news. That's great to hear. Just like we said, the whole, the whole point of this whole thing is, is how much Henderson is growing. They're using these Opportunity Zone funds. They're doing all this great work. And, and uh, you know, Anthony, I'm telling you, I, I, you're, you're doing such, such good things. I'm really, really impressed on your entire agency and organization. Good job. Good job. Yeah, excellent. That. And it's a team yeah. effort. It's not just um, the staff in the redevelopment agency. It's the relationships that we have built with our stakeholders, with um, our mayor and city council members who are 100% in support of seeing reinvestment happen, not only in downtown but throughout our community, and um, a great city manager and management team that um, believe in the process and um, – believe in Henderson as a great community. Exactly, exactly. Now, uh, now Anthony, if, if there's a developer that's listening to this, a real estate guy or maybe an investor, somebody who wants to uh, invest in an Opportunity Zone fund that's, that's, that's Henderson is participating in, is there a, how do they get a hold of you? Is there a website? Should they call you, email, or what? Um, absolutely. So they could go to the cityofhenderson.com website and look for um, the redevelopment agency as one of our departments. They can also call um, the redevelopment agency's um, phone number at 702-267-1515. Excellent. Boy. I'm t- I'm t- Vicki, I'm telling you, if, if anyone's listening to this and they're not thinking about moving to Henderson, they're crazy, right? Well, that would be a true fact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree Ron, with you that, anything- Ron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, Vicki, do you have any uh, closing uh, uh, questions or ideas or thoughts or comments? Well, you know, we do podcasts with uh, various people from various uh, Opportunity Zone areas, and 
I have to say, Anthony, that everyone's got their own place, but Henderson, like you said, is thinking outside of the box, and I think that you will be very successful using this program, and we all anticipate that President Trump will extend this once he sees that how successful places like Henderson are doing, there's no reason to stop it within 10 years. So I congratulate you, Anthony, on an excellent job. I appreciate that, Vicki, and your encouragement for us to continue working hard. And we will do everything we can for you, Anthony, to promote you and Henderson. That is great. I appreciate that very much. Yes, and we'll put all these links into the show notes. If you're listening to the podcast right now on mappableusa.com, uh, we have a little light-up at the show notes. We'll have links to Anthony's website and links to some of the things that we talked about in today's uh, podcast. So once again, uh, Anthony Malloy, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Vicki, thanks for being a co-host on today's episode. And you guys are listening to the Mappable USA podcast at www.mappableusa.com. Go to that Skype site, scroll down, you'll see all our syndication sources. Subscribe to your favorites so you don't miss any episode. And if you want to be a guest on the show like Anthony was today, there's a guest tab there. You can click on that and we'll see what we can do about getting you on the show. Thank you so much oh, for listening, and everyone. Don't forget to go to our Opportunity Zone Marketplace as well as our new in developing uh, website the Opportunity Zone Authority to find certified funds. That's an, that's an excellent close right there. All right, folks, thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next time on another Mappable USA podcast. Thank you all for listening. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.